Hey, my friend, if you have sinned and you feel like you know you've been born again, you're a Christian, but you sin, you've fallen into sin, and you may be feeling condemned in your heart, like God has nothing to do with you. You finally did that last, you, you finally did it. This is your 20th time you failed to sin, and God has nothing to do with you anymore. It's over. Well, this episode is for you, my friend, because... All of us, even the greatest pastors in history, have fallen into sin, and God paid for every single one of those sins, and there's no condemnation. That means punishment. That means the wrath of God is not on you. And that's what grace is all about. That doesn't mean we just go around freely sinning, you guys. But what it means is that you belong to God. You get back up on your feet, and you get back in the race and you get back and, and do get back to, to being with Jesus and working for him because you get to work for him. You don't have to, but you get to. And this episode's gonna help you. We're gonna look at Romans chapter eight. This is the best chapter after you've sinned, one of them anyway. Psalm 51's another great one after David sinned. He said, Created me a clean heart, God. But God's doing that already for you if you're a believer. So let's look at Romans eight right now, my friend. All right, here it is. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. That means punishment, no condemnation at all. I love that, at all. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Have you given your life to Christ? Are you in Christ Jesus? If you're not, at the end of this episode, you will have an opportunity to do that. But if you have you are in Christ. Get back up on your feet and realize that. Confess your sin to God. That's a good thing to confess your sin and, and confess to others. If you sin against somebody, confess that and that will free you up. But there is therefore now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you've been born again, you are in him. Now, some people are saying today, like, well, there's that scripture that says, you know, Jesus says, um, away from me, I never knew you. Well, that means he never knew you. But if you've been born again, he knows you and you're his child. I don't care what you've done. You may have uh, gotten a, la a DUI. You may have uh, taken drugs or looked at pornography for the hundredth time and you think God is done with you. No, he's not. Even if human beings are done with you, God is not done with you. You've been born again. You are in Christ. Claim that. Claim that and stand in that. And then you will stop sinning so much because you'll be in his presence, you guys. So let's continue on in the scripture here. This is so good, you guys. This is the some rich, deep stuff, you guys, in Romans chapter 8. And here it says, in verse two, for the law, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death, right? The law of death means that you have a certificate of death. I had a boss who actually said one thing and he was not a believer and he said the one thing we're all guaranteed, we all have a certificate of death. That's right, that's the law of death. But if you are a believer, no. You might physically die in this body, breathe your last in this body, but God's not done with you. Your soul goes to him in his presence, in Jesus' presence. It's more important to be concerned about what happens to your soul, not your body or your life here on earth. What's more important <laughs> is your soul. Where do you go forever? Where do you go for eternity? That's the most important thing, you guys. And again, you will have an opportunity at the end of this episode, if you never have, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. So let's go back to Romans 11, uh, sorry, Romans 8 again. Romans 11 is one of my favorite scriptures, by the way, that's, or chapters, that's why I, I said that. But anyway, let's go back up to verse one. We left where there was no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. 
for what the law could not do, right? The law can't save you because <laughs> you can't follow it. Only Jesus followed it perfectly. So for what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, through your flesh, right? Your flesh can't follow the law. God did, right? God did. And who is he talking about here? Sending his own son, God the Son, right? God did this, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, right? Like a body in a, a human person, body, human being, just like you and me, because he was fully man and fully God, right? Hard for us to understand that, but that's how that's what it says here. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. When did he condemn sin in the flesh? When he was on that cross. It was all nailed to the cross. Your sin, all of it, your past sin, your present sin, and your future sin was nailed to the cross. It was dealt with by Jesus. And you need to claim that and you need to understand that so that you can be free to worship him, free to, to be in his presence and to realize you are forgiven. He has forgiven you, my friend. Lay your burden down at the cross. He already has forgiven you. Realize that. That's what grace is all about. It doesn't mean you go freely sinning, like I said, but it means that you are forgiven and you can get back up on your feet and, and realize that you are a child of God, but you belong to Jesus. Very important that you understand that. That's why we're going through this scripture. This is like some of the most important scripture in the whole world, in your world and my world, you guys. Very important stuff. So he condemns sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Very good right there. How do you stay empowered by God? Walk in the Spirit. Ask to be filled by the Holy Spirit every day. First thing in the morning when you pray, ask God to please fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you can follow him well. You can do good during the day because it is by the power of God, not by our own power. And then verse 5 says this. It says, For those who are in, according, in accord with the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, right? Those who don't aren't believers, right? That's, that's how it is. But those who are in, in accord with the Spirit, I like that word, accord with the Spirit. That's like being on the same sheet of music with the Spirit. You're following the Spirit. The things of the Spirit, for the mind is... So here it is. So the mind is set on the flesh is death. The mind that's set on the on the flesh, right? Those who aren't believers is death. But the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. You could have peace with God because the mind is set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself toward the law, for it is not even able to do so. In other words, you can't do it on your own, in your own power in the flesh. Your own power can't do it. That's fleshly power. But by the Spirit, you can, right? And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. There it is. If you're in the flesh, you can't please God. However, I love that. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If you're a believer, my friend, you're in the Spirit. Even if you don't feel it, you are. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. So if you've never been filled by the Holy Spirit, you've never actually been born again and had a moment where you knew you were made a new person by the Holy Spirit, then this could be your opportunity right now. We're going to pray here in a couple minutes where you can receive Jesus and be filled by the Holy Spirit, my friend. But here it is. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him, right? Those are strong words right there. If Christ is in you, however, right? If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. So even if you have the uh, spark, just a little glimmer of flame inside of you, of the Holy Spirit, you still belong to him. But why do that when you could be fully on fire, like a big bonfire, a big campfire, a roaring fire, 
filled with the Holy Spirit and have power to please God. Isn't that better? That's much better, my friend. Here it is. But in verse 11, but if the spirit of him, well, let me go back here. Sorry, my, my videos are, they're actually uh, not edited. So bear with me here. I just, they're raw guys. It's like a live stream, basically. Uh, here it is. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, right? Being born again. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That means you're in Christ when the spirit is in you. So as I promised, my friend, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, been born again by the Holy Spirit, you could be born again right now, filled with the Holy Spirit, if you give your life to Jesus. First, you need to realize, yes, you are a sinner. You might be saying, no, I've never sinned. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a pretty good person compared to most. Well, that might be true, but God does not grade on a curve. You Have you told a lie any time in your life? Yeah, you have, and that makes you a liar. Have you blasphemed the name of God? I'll bet you have, and you don't realize it. Have you ever said God in the D-A-M-N-E-D, you know, God, you know, most of us have. You've done that. Have you looked on a woman, or if you're a woman, have you looked at a man with lust? That makes you a fornicator. Jesus said if you've done that in your heart, then it's the same. It's a sin, right? We're all sinners, my friend. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. And you have to realize that first and feel that conviction in your heart. If you feel that, then that's good because the Holy Spirit is working in your heart. And right now, you can say a prayer to receive Jesus and be born again in the Spirit. It's kind of like a sailboat. The sails are, are tied up, right? When you're not born again, they're tied up and you're just drifting along in the current. And, and you have no, there's no purpose and there's no direction. But if you open up your heart, like open up those sails, untie them and let the sails open up and let God, the Holy Spirit, blow the ruach. That's the Hebrew word for spirit, which is like the wind. His spirit opens up your sails. In other words, open up your soul to him. He will start driving you who are that vessel, right? That boat drifting along with no purpose. Now you'll have a purpose and he's driving you to heaven. So you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a, a picture, kind of a, a story that illustrates what it is to be born again, my friend. You belong to him. You're indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Would you like that? Well, if you would, say this prayer right after me, my friend. Ready? You just repeat these words. You are praying to God, not me, not anybody else. This is business between you and God. Would you like that? Repeat these words after me from a prayer, from your heart to God. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died on that cross for my sin. I believe that he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days, he was raised from the dead, and he is alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, my friend. Hey, you may be feeling something awesome inside right now, a freedom, a lightness, a, a new beginning. You may not be feeling anything, but what we go off of is Scripture, what the Bible says, what we just read. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Now you are in Christ. And for those of you who feel condemned in your heart and you may be feeling like I've sinned so much that God's just done with me, you can do a recommitment prayer right now. I'm going to pray with you. You could pray. I'm going to recommit myself too. And you could recommit your life to Christ right now and have a new beginning, a restoration, so to speak, right? Well, let's, let's pray that right now. 
Dear God, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me, Lord. I, I thank you for dying on the cross. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for loving me and, and restoring me and giving me strength again. And, and please fill me with your Holy Spirit once again, I ask. Fully and completely fill me overflowing so that I may serve you well. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, my friend. All right. Hey, check out my new book, See Jesus in the Old Testament. You're going to see all the places where he's found in the types and portraits and pictures and also in the prophecies and in the Psalms. It kind of follows the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, the order that Jesus put in in Luke chapter 24 in the books of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. I think you'll enjoy it. Check it out. There's a link down in the description below, also in the comments where you can check it out on Amazon. Leave a review. You, that will help spread it to all over the world, my friend. So, hey, you could also click on this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. God bless you. I love you. I'll talk to you later.